Good afternoon, it's Little Red Riding Hood, and I'm ready to read Pay Attention Carter Jones to you. It's by Gary D. Smith, and we don't forget that today's Sunday and we're closed. We were, already, we were closed already, we're closed to the public, but our curbside service is closed on, on the weekends. We'll resume it Monday at, at 8 o'clock a.m. But if you've not registered for summer reading, it's not too late, www.mccpl.lib.al.us. So yesterday when I was reading, the whole, the butler had taught the whole varsity eighth grade team and had, was even teaching Coach Karoski how to play cricket. And it's supposed to be one of the best games to ever learn. And then Master Carter Jones went to a art gallery and he's been to a ballet. So let's see what happens in chapter 12. Do you think his dad's gonna email him yet? Leave in the comments below if you think he's gonna email. And um, if you don't think, he, email, put that in the comments. Any adult in the room, if you will type in the comments below and let us know how many children and how many adults are watching, that will help us with our stats. All right, let's get started with chapter 12, A Googly. A Googly is a deceptive hitch spun with the wrist so that it seems as though it must angle one way when in fact it is unexpectedly, unexpectedly angles exactly the opposite way. On Monday morning, Krebs was waiting for me in the middle school lobby. No kid, Carson Krebs. That Car that's Carson Krebs, you remember, who hasn't talked to a sixth grader since he was a sixth grader. Hey, Jones, he said. I looked around. There had been someone else named Jones. Listen, I got an idea on Saturday, and I want you to talk to Coach about it. Coach Karoski? He looked at me like I was stupid. Sixth grade. Bowles Fitzpatrick, I think he should coach our cricket team. He's a butler, I said. Carson Krebs waited. Okay, I said. There's a sign-up sheet in the gym. Karoski said he'd clear it with the administration, and Bowles Fitzpatrick would be the unofficial but kind of official assistant coach. The team's open to eighth graders and anyone else by invitation. So go look at it, then talk to coach tonight. I'll talk to him too, okay? Okay, I said. He started away and then turned and called across the lobby. And Jones, yeah, I asked. Yeah, I said. Remember, this is cricket. This is serious. I felt myself shiver. On the way to the gym, I saw a sign. And Yang and Hopewell and Briggs and Chaw and Barkus and every single one stopped and kind of hit me on the shoulder and asked if I'd seen Krebs yet and wasn't it great and I should go see the sign-up sheet so by the time I reached the gym my shoulder was sort of sore but it didn't matter once I got there here's what it said on the sign-up sheet eighth grade varsity cricket team open to all eighth graders others by invitation only. So do you think Jones is gonna get invited to play? And what about his other friend? Do you think he's gonna get invited to play? So let's see what happens. So guess whose name was under by invitation only? Mine and Billy Colts. We were the only sixth graders on the team. I mean, invited on the team. I saw Billy Colt in homeroom, and while Miss Hardnick droned, he leaned over. Are you going to do it? Side in, I said. I guess you can figure out what the rest of the day was like. I mean, how often does a sixth grader get invited onto an eighth grade team? Never. And we heard about it in every class, in language arts, Mrs. Hardnick said she was proud of us for expanding our repertoire beyond typical, typically American sports. We had to look at the word repertoire, which I think she meant for us to do. You know what language arts teachers are like. When you hear a big word, you can take the dictionary and look it up, or you can 
nowadays you can go online and um, look it up. Webster's Dictionary is online and so is several others. In PE, Coach Krosky pretended to be a boiler and bowled a googly. And Billy Colt and I pretended to be batsmen, belting in it, it out past the covers. But none of the other sixth graders knew what we were doing. In math skills, Mr. Barkus, who I think was pretty proud of his son, the cricketer, wondered if he could use the scoring in cricket match to make up word problems. I hoped not. In physical science, Mrs. Rorbell said she had once attended all five days of a test match between England and Australia. And I never understood a single thing that was going on, Mrs. Sulaska said. He had once seen a test match, too. I left after 10 minutes. But Principal Seedwick was excited. My husband and I lived in England for two years while he was studying art, she said. He played cricket every chance he could. I'm so glad you brought the sport to Longfellow. Then she said, you didn't really pound stakes into the football field, did you? No, don't say anything. I don't want to know if you did. She looked at me. Vice President Del Banco especially should know if you did. That's how it was all day. Billy Colt and I were sixth graders on an eighth grade team, sort of like the Olympic God. Can you believe it? I mean, it was so perfect. I didn't even mind when the butler told me we were going with Annie to a robotics club open house. My mother, the butler, said, might join us if she was able, but I guess she wasn't able, even though the open house lasted a full hour and a half after school, right through the reruns of Ace Robotroid and the Robotroid Rangers, because she never showed. She would probably have been bored anyway. It was an open house with mostly little robots that moved forward three feet and stopped, and little robots that lifted boxes up in the air until the boxes fell from their claws, or until the boxes made the little robots tip over, and little robot, robots that waved their arms like they were directing a plane into its gate. But I clapped every time Annie's robot made it, made any sign of moving at all. A tread that was inched forward, an arm that twitched, a head that turned, a light that flashed for half a second. Anything. I didn't mind. That's how perfect my day was. And when Annie said, thanks for coming, Carter, I said, any time. And she said, really? And I said, sure. And I meant it. When we got home that afternoon, Annie went to tell Emily and Charlie about her open house. And I went to find my mother because I was going to need some white pants and a white sweater and some other white stuff, even though we probably couldn't afford it. But I thought I'd ask anyway. I walked through the kitchen and she wasn't there. And then I walked down to the basement to see if she was doing laundry and she wasn't. And then I walked upstairs and the door to her room was closed. I knocked and opened it. She was sitting on the other side of the bed. She was holding Courier's teddy bear. His name was Bob Bear. She was holding Bob Bear. Carter, she said. That's all. Just Carter. I wish I could have said something, but it's not like a play. It's not like someone has written you a bunch of lines and you can just say the right stuff. I couldn't say anything because I didn't know what to say. But I could see. All right. That terrible, terrible day, cold and wet, putting Courier in. It's your father, she said. I got an email. Then I saw something else. I could see a thousand things at once. What do you think is going on? She's got an email, but Carter hadn't gotten an email. And her mom's sitting on the bed holding Courier's bear. What do you think is going on? Put it in the comments below and let me know what you think is going on. I have some ideas, but I don't want to give it away. My father transferred back to Afghanistan and him not telling us because we'd worry it was too dangerous. My father, unconscious, the debris of an explosion still falling around him. My father, lying alongside a road covered with sand and stone and blood, Holding his leg, his men screaming, Medic! Medic! 
my father in the ditch shot someone working over him with bandages, him grimacing. My father getting carried out in a stretcher, his face grayer than dirt. My father in a, do you think any of those are the, what's going on? Comment below and let me know what you think. Carter, said my mother, and she held out her arms. I sat next to her on the bed and she held me close to her. I froze. You know how to freeze? Can you freeze like a statue? Good job. Is he all right? I said. She held me another minute. Then she sat back. She wiped her eyes. She looked at me. Carter, she said. Mom, is he coming back? I could barely squeak it out. And she shook her head. I saw it again. My father getting carried out on a stretcher. His face grayer than dirt. My father in a... My father beneath a flag. The flag folded perfectly at the corners. My father. He's staying in Germany, she said. I looked at her. They won't fly him home. He says Germany is, is his home. What? She started to cry again. He's hurt? She shook her head. He's not hurt? She shook her head. I don't understand. My mother held me tightly. Carter, she said, still crying. She showed me the email she had printed out. And that's when I got it. That's when I really got it. It wasn't that Captain Jackson Jones was her. It wasn't that Captain Jackson Jones couldn't come home. It wasn't that Captain Jackson Jones didn't want to come home. It was that Captain Jackson Jones had met someone else. It was that Captain Jackson Jones wanted to stay in Germany. It was that Captain Jackson Jones didn't want to be with us anymore. How's that for a googly? And boys and girls, that is chapter 12. And on Monday, I'll do it live again on Facebook. And you can still tune in on YouTube. But I'm going to read chapter 13, The Stumps. And so we left. Carter's mom got an evil, but Carter still hasn't gotten his. And he finds his mama up in the room holding his younger brother Courier's teddy bear. And... He, We'll learn what happened to Courier later on, but he's thinking that his dad's dead, and that's not what's going on. His dad loves Germany so much, he's going to stay there, and he's not going to be with his family anymore. So we're going to learn what's going to happen to the family, and who's going to take, who's going to be the man in charge of the house? Write in the comments what you think, and you know, we'll respond to you. Thank you so much for viewing. And don't forget, there's no curbside service today. But we'll see you Monday at not, uh, 8 a.m. And we'll do it Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Thank you so much for tuning in. And if you have any questions about signing up for summer reading, call 334-625-4844. Go to our website at www.mccpl.liv.al.us. And you can even message us on Facebook and one of us will be happy to answer your questions. Thank you so much and I'll see you tomorrow which will be Monday and it'll be live. Can't wait to see you again. Pay attention Carter Jones.